Hello, I'm Joanne Myers, Director of Public Affairs Programs. As many of you know, the Carnegie Council has been a forum for the discussion of ethical issues in international decision making. But to continue to bring these wonderful programs to you, we need your help. Please visit carnegiecouncil.org, click on donate slash join. Thank you for doing so. I am going to start with, um, with um, the, uh, a, Christmas, um, a Christmas tale and, uh, and Charles Dickens. The Christmas Carol was um, an attack. It wasn't just um, the, um, the wonderful image of a uh, Christmas dinner with a flaming pudding that, um, that we all remember, but it was really Econ 101. Um, it was an attack on the deeply pessimistic and indeed dismal economics of the day. Um, by, by the 1840s, whatever was optimistic in the, um, in the vision of Adam Smith had been um, uh, you know, buried in the deeply pessimistic outlooks of Malthus, Ricardo, and Dickens' contemporary, John Stuart Mill. They saw that the nation could get richer as indeed England was becoming the richest and most powerful nation in the world, but that this would not mean that the bottom nine-tenths, the, um, the nine parts of all mankind who were uh, born to drudge their way through life, <laughs> that they could expect any improvement. So the nation would get richer, but the bottom nine-tenths would continue to um, live basically at subsistence uh, with a quality of life not really significantly higher than that of expensive livestock, just as they had for the previous 2,000 years. Dickens here uh, is calling for uh, something that is really revolutionary, which is a hopeful science, a science that, uh, that um, you know, sees that the limits of growth might be pushed outward that, uh, and that the bottom nine-tenths might have some hope. And not just um, utopian um, uh, wishful thinking, but realistic hope of improvement. So Dickens was calling for a, an economics with a little human bloom, a little human warmth. The idea that um, mankind was a creature of circumstance and that circumstances were not immutable, that mankind could take its material destiny into its own hands was so new that even someone as um, evolved and uh, articulate and thoughtful and liberal as Jane Austen, who was born only a brief generation before Dickens, so new that Jane Austen never considered it, that uh, in, in her world, the world in which Dickens was born, uh, the, the best that most of us in those bottom nine tenths could hope for is that we could resign ourselves to the station in life to which we were born. So this was the notion that our circumstances were malleable and that humanity was capable of taking its fit, material fate into its own hands was the, one of the most radical ideas in human history. And it was born in London um, in, among a group of people, which Dickens was the most imaginative, in an active imagination. And it spread outward like ripples in a pond 
until it transformed the lives of everyone on the planet, and it is still spreading. Mm -hmm.